Yes, uh, thanks for continuing on with us. This is Nyagawani broadcasting live from the Ton Raza Exchange here in Kuala Lumpur. My name is Ibrahim Sani. We are doing this broadcast uh, to ensure that there is that intensity and that excitement coming in from the markets as well. Uh, this is, of course, D-Day Budget 2023. Uh, as at 9.47 a.m. or thereof, uh, the KLCI has shared five points to 4,415 points. Uh, some key uh, sectors that, need, that needs to be looked at, uh, construction uh, as well as manufacturing. Perhaps there is some interrelatability towards uh, materials issues being discussed uh, that might be discussed in the budget, uh, but more importantly, foreign workers. These are the kind of themes that we are picking up or the mood that we're picking up from the budget 2023. Of course, the budget is going to be presented uh, by the finance minister, Yang Bohormat uh, Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul, around 3 p.m., of which at Astro Awani, we're going to be bringing the live broadcast show as well, where my colleague Najib Aruf is going to be anchoring that show. So do stay tuned. All this and more on Astro Awani throughout the day. Uh, and of course, 3 p.m. is the time that you need to really sit down in front of TV and find out more. Now, for today, for this morning, we've had our conversations with Azmi very recently, uh, the CEO of InvestKL. We've also had uh, Zafri Zulkifli of MIDF and, uh, of course, Wan Dazrik uh, as well. Now, today, we shall shift our focus to my friend, Aaron Sarma. Aaron, one of the reasons why we wanted to bring you in is because you are less optimistic than the three speakers before this. Ooh. Yes. Not ooh, you're really. Set, you're setting the stage for you. No, no, yeah, I'm setting the stage. <laughs> How pessimistic are you for Malaysia for 2023? So I think it's going to be a tough year ahead, uh, mostly because of the global market. You have right? delivered the yeah. goods, brother. Yeah, yes, there okay, you go. So year. I've done the job. Right? Daddy, it's more very good. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. So I, I think it's going to be a tough year ahead because I think there's a lot of uncertainty, not just in Malaysia, but globally, right, with the global economy. Um, I think where the silver lining is, is that if you're starting a business now, there's a huge upside for you. And if you're investing in companies now, there's a huge upside. But of course, difficult times ahead, you need to have a good business with good models for you to persevere through these difficult periods. Mm, okay, and of course, uh, some areas of concern would be on the SME and of course the uh, startup scene, uh, which you are actively involved in. What would be some of the areas of concern that you think needs to be addressed in this year's budget in order for us to reinvigorate both these sectors, of course the SME as well as the startups? So I, I think there are three buckets right, of things that I, I hope to see. Firstly is in the area of access to capital, right? Where, whether it's, uh, it's grants, it's loans, or it's equity-based investments, I'm looking to see how the budget's going to address these issues. Mm. The second bl block is in talent. Mm. How will our companies hire the best people to run their businesses mm. and uh, escape things like brain drain, escape things like uh, not being able to hire the best talent who are going to other, other markets to work there, right? That's mm. another thing. And, and the third thing is just general adoption, right? So one way we can help our SMEs and our startups is to ensure that people use the solutions that our startups and SMEs are providing. Mm. It could be by ensuring that they use uh, e-wallets, so it could be ensuring that... Uh, SMEs adopt new digital solutions, therefore buying it from a startup. Mm. Or it could be corporates uh, working closely with startups. So I'm looking at how the government will like, incentivize more usage of digital solutions in the budget this year. Of course, incentivizing digital solutions has always been a key theme uh, exactly, from yeah. the previous year's budgets. Do you feel that more is going to be done this year? What will be some of the ideas that you think the budget is going to address? Of course, this is we're venturing towards speculative territory. Yeah, yeah. I, I think what they've done over the last few years was really good with the SME digital, uh, digital uh, digitization grant. Yes. Right? There was a grant that allowed SMEs to use solutions and the government would subsidize these solutions for a year. I think they should continue this, this program. Mm. I also think they should target not just uh, middle-sized SMEs, but also micro-SMEs, right? Mm. Because I think that's a larger SME block in the country, mm. uh, mostly micro-SMEs. Mm. How can these users start using these solutions for their businesses, whether it's a POS system, a CRM system, mm. to kind of uh, improve their business instead of using pen and paper, which a lot of people are doing. So I think mm. that's one thing I'm really looking towards doing. Uh, from the user standpoint, with the Riot standpoint, we've had uh, incentives to encourage people to use e-wallets in the past. Mm. Right? So now with you know, fuel prices being a little bit, uh, a bit, bit sketchy over, over mm. the last few months, mm. I think maybe like a fuel subsidy will be really interesting as well, mm. but using e-wallets to use it. So you encourage people to use these solutions, but, uh, but also give them some sort of benefit in return. Of course, uh, it also brings about that whole idea of bringing the grey economy out into the air uh, and of course out into the open uh, if you use digital wallets and digital payments 
each and every single transaction can be seen by uh, the regulators and the government. Not many people are going to like this transparency. I understand that. But at the same time, if you're speaking on behalf of the government, you want to see these kind of transactions seen um, on the record. Perhaps better transactions towards uh, understanding uh, how GST is going to be implemented, perhaps, mm -hmm. you know, how... Um, taxation can be better applied to these kind of businesses. Um, but at the same time, while we talk about subsidies and while we talk about the idea of how um, many of these uh, cost of livings need to be managed, a lot of conversation needs to also be had on how the government is going to fund these kind mm. of uh, subsidies. They need investments. Uh, they need foreign direct investments exactly, coming yeah. in. Do you feel that investors have that appetite to come into the country? Do you feel that Malaysia is that top destination uh, for investors to just pump in their money and prop up some businesses here? So I think, unfortunately, it's been a little bit challenging over the last couple, uh, last year or so, especially bringing investments into Malaysia. Um, a lot of it is due to some uncertainty in the markets, yep. uh, maybe some political uncertainty, which I hope in the next oh, few... Maybe it's a confirmed thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm hedging. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I think it's, it's also something that hopefully will be cleared up over the next couple of weeks or so, right? whereby we'll have some clarity. The budget will do a lot to kind of enforce this, right? By saying this is the kind of the, the, the vision of the, of the government, yep. this is what we're going to do, and that will, I think, comfort a lot of foreign investors who want to come here. Uh, we are losing out some of this game to our neighbours down south because obviously it's a much more stable market environment for investments to go to. So if we can kind of get our things in order and provide some stability, uh, investments will come. All right, of course, uh, one more thing that we need to explore is in terms of uh, mobility. I'm talking about Malaysians trying to uh, have the ability to work abroad, but more importantly, more workers coming to Malaysia. Mm -hmm. We're not just talking about the construction sector and the manufacturing sector and all the other stuff. I'm talking about high-skilled knowledge kind of workers. It has always been an issue for them to come to Malaysia. There's a lot of work permits, a lot of obstacles and hurdles that mm -hmm. they need to overcome. Do you feel that this needs to be addressed in this particular budget where you know, trying to make mobility a little bit easier for knowledge workers to come here and work here? I don't know if it needs to be in the budget itself because there are already policies to do this, right? If anything, it should be easier for people to bring in talents, right? So what one complaint we hear from all the, a lot of the companies we work with, and we've invested in 30 companies over the last two and a half years, mm. uh, is that it's very difficult to get these things over the line. Maybe it's a, uh, a lot of red tape or mm. maybe it's a lot of process. And what happens is they tend to give up if it's too difficult, right? Mm. So maybe... Mm. Allowing them uh, a clearer path to bring in talent is really important. Mm. Also, making it really attractive for the talent to come here is important. So I think mm. there are some initiatives that we can do to really make it kind of more comfortable for people to, to come over, some sort of investments, some sort of, some sort of like benefits if you come to, to Malaysia, or maybe get cheaper housing, that sort of thing will actually be much better for, foreign, for foreigners to come and work here. I mean, we can only sell our food for so long, right? Yeah. Because, uh, you know, uh, but I think ultimately it's about stability, about having a good career here and having good companies here. That's why people will come to Malaysia and, and work here. Okay, now, outside of the budget, we need to ask you about some of the current trends and current developments that is seen here in Malaysia, some sectors that might see worth uh, in terms of investment. I'm tapping into your uh, scale-up Malaysia kind of role. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you see growth areas would be? But more importantly, where do you see the long-term um, uh, uh, areas of uh, uh, concern should be? Is it sustainability? Is it green agenda? Is it um, harnessing uh, you know, renewables energy? W mm. What is immediate that needs to be attended to? What is the long-term areas of concern that you think we should address eventually? So I, I think in terms of like, immediate like, opportunities, right? Uh, I'm a big fan of agriculture technology or agri-tech as they call it. Uh, Malaysia has traditionally been a very much an agriculture country. Yeah. Uh, right? So innovations around the space would be very interesting. And most of than just innovations, is adoption. Because we've got a lot of agencies and a lot of government kind of GLC type bodies yep. who are kind of maybe not really into the forefront of the technologies, but to really work with startups to kind of bring these technologies into the processes, maybe efficiency in farming, uh, worker productivity, that kind of thing. So I think agriculture is a huge thing. Uh, a few months ago, we saw the announcement of these um, five digital bank licenses, yep. uh, the, which is, I think is really exciting. Yep. But I'm looking at all the startups and entrepreneurs that will build solutions around these digital banks. Yeah. Because they're going to need technology, right? So that's what we're really looking into. On the clean tech side, it's something that I've lamented for a while. I think Sorry, it's clean tech now. Clean tech or green? I don't know. It, it changes. Clean right? tech. Yeah, let's call it let's clean roll, tech. Roll, let's roll with yeah, it. Yes. Clean tech. Uh, I, I am very concerned because we don't see a lot of this kind of innovation uh, with young startups. You know, I, a few months ago, I think uh, I, I tweeted like, you know, I need clean tech startups out there, right? And we got lots of likes on that tweet, but 
hardly anyone wrote in to say, hey, I've got a clean tech solution. Conversely, uh, I was recently in Singapore for Tech in Asia in Singapore, and I met at least like, you know, 10 different companies doing something in either ESG or clean tech, or if you want to call it green tech, uh, which is something that I think we need to emphasize more in Malaysia uh, to kind of get more of these kind of solutions out there. You know, I think the reason could be because in order for you to invest in clean tech, you're looking at a long-term horizon, longer term, mm -hmm. uh, you're looking at a lot of money poured True. into this. And perhaps VCs and other investors might not necessarily have that kind of appetite to wait it out. And, and the is other that, thing... Is that, uh, like a maybe good not really. I think a lot of VCs are looking for solutions, and, and I know quite a number of investors in Malaysia, outside Malaysia, who are looking for clean tech solutions, okay. even from Malaysian entrepreneurs. Okay. But I do think it's a bit challenging to do like a clean energy company in Malaysia okay. because we subsidize all this stuff. So petrol is cheap, electricity is cheap. Yeah. So if I were to create a solar company, yeah. the commercials, I mean, and there are some good solar companies in Malaysia, uh, the commercials maybe aren't as attractive as it would be in a country where uh, electricity ex is expensive. Yeah. Right? So we're seeing this in the West, yeah. where electricity is getting really expensive and yeah. uh, everybody's now going EV this, EV that, right? Yeah. Um, and they're also trying to look for alternative sources of energy. Yeah. But in Malaysia, we are kind of maybe spoiled yeah. because these things are subsidized. So uh, in a way, we're victims of our own success in this regard yeah. that people don't feel the need to build these solutions here. So there's a lot of solutions that needs to be built. There's also an ability for us to learn more about this. Yes. Of course, Aaron, it's always a pleasure talking to you. I'll always. be discussing with Aaron again on my show Notepad tomorrow night uh, at 10.30 p.m. Or is it 10 p.m.? Tomorrow night, uh, talking about the items post-budget. Of course, that's going to happen only after we know what's going to happen next. Uh, but of course, for now, uh, some of the items that we, are dis we have been discussing will continue to be discussed uh, the entire day on Astro Awani. Uh, my personal areas of um, uh, interest would be on how we are going to fund our 80 billion ringgit um, uh, subsidy. Could be 100 billion ringgit by the, the end of the year. Another area of concern that I would like to look at is on dividends payment by Patronas and other uh, GLCs to the government and taxation. How are we going to improve on this very narrow, very narrow tax base? Um, and some of these items have been discussed on my show notepad. I've been discussing it with uh, Deloitte, uh, with Ernst and Young, um, and uh, next week uh, we're going to be discussing this with KPMG and a lot more. So taxation is a big issue that needs to be looked at. So how is the government going to fund? this budget, not how much the government is going to spend this budget. Spending is fun, right? Getting the money to spend, that's the hard work. So all this and more at 3 p.m. today. Stay tuned the entire day on Astrawani because the conversation is going to go on towards the evening as well. For now, this is me, Ibrahim Sani, signing off as well as from my early colleague, uh, Najib Arof, uh, from the Tun Raza Exchange. Do stay tuned with Astrawani. Badai COVID-19 meninggalkan impak luar biasa. Bagaimana bajet 2023 meneruskan momentum pemulihan negara? Tak kala kos sehari hidup meningkat, cabaran ekonomi global. Apa yang ada dalam bajet kali ini untuk membina semula daya ketahanan negara dan memangkin pembaharuan? Pasca pandemik, bagaimana bajet kali ini akan membantu Malaysia untuk bangkit semula? Adakah terjawab persoalan demi persoalan tentang harapan kita? Kami bawakan wakil pelbagai kaum, pelbagai industri. Saksikan liputan istimewa Bajet 2023 Jumaat 7 Oktober ini bermula 3 petang hanya di Astro Awani.